very good training that's going in Victor Rounds. Very, very good. At the end of the 2000s, Dimitri Pirog captured the fastidious audience with authentic technique and shattering punching power. His career was short-lived, but left an indelible mark in the history books of fisticuffs. Now is the time to meet the Grand Master, the untouchable boxing enigma whose puzzle remains unsolved to this day. Leaned into it for him. But he's a pressure fighter, which is amazing. Stop, stop, stop. Dmitry grew up in a small coastal town in southern Russia. At the age of five, he expressed interest in chess and even joined a local club. However, his love for the pugilistic arts prevailed. As an amateur, Pirog amassed 200 victories before going pro at the age of 25. Being a huge fan of Sugar Ray Leonard, he aspired to adopt a similar style. The American legend revolutionized the sweet science in the 1970s, dominating the field with a phenomenal duo of speed and... Dimitri's signature style was on display already in his debut. Always being relaxed, he was throwing sharp punches. While the defense was impenetrable. Fast, non-telegraphed combinations kept finding the mark. And after three knockdowns, the referee waved it off. Within the first year, Dmitry scored seven wins. And caught the keen attention of boxing aficionados. Due to his calculated yet improvisational approach, he earned the nickname Grand Master. Thus arose the problem the world's best boxers would face in the near future. You can observe a boxer's style and gain insight into their inner realm. Apparently it's my personality. I don't like to get hit, but at the same time I always move forward and never run away from an opponent. With the intention of achieving international recognition, Pirog established himself in the highly competitive middleweight division, up to 160 pounds. Pirog used to compete without a coach in his early career, but later teamed up with Vyacheslav Nipagodin. Boasting an impressive 11-0 record, he challenged for the WBC Asia belt. Pirog was flowing like quicksilver, bombarding the challenger non-stop from various angles. <laughs> Imposing his rhythm, he upped the aggression, constantly forcing overextensions and delivering punishment. Remaining elusive to enemy strikes. In the fifth round, the Grandmaster put the adversary in Zugzwang. Compelling the opposite corner to accept defeat. Having solidified his position as Russia's top middleweight, Dmitry embarked on a journey to Europe in the summer of 2009. In a match for the WBO Intercontinental Gold, he faced veteran Kofi Jantua. Pirog unleashed multi-layered combinations from the very beginning. That troubled Jantua. Yeah, Jantua has felt that. Just that he won't know a huge amount about Pirog, I guess. Initiating his attacks with body punches, he seamlessly transitioned to the head. The foe tried to keep up, but only managed to swing at the air. Some leverage, left hand from here, and uh, Jetter is brushed off by it. The Grandmaster showed exemplary trunk movement and relished in the process. Well, it thinks this, this old guy can't hurt me, you know, which is... <laughs> 
at the moment looking a pretty safe bet. And who can do that? Um, you're going to take him out of his... Drawing 10 after 10 on the judges' scorecards until the final bell. Uh, the final few minutes then for Pierrot. Top level. Obviously, there's a long way to go yet. He's EBU. Yeah, it'll make him have a fight, have a war. There it is. End of the fight. Referee steps in. So there he is, Dimitri Pierrot. Dimitri entered the global rankings and earned the right to challenge for the WBO Asia belt. In the opposite corner stood journeyman Eric Mitchell. The Russian's shoulder roll was on point while he was gathering the necessary data, before showering the enemy with switch stance flurries. Having decoded the opponent's patterns, he started to invest in his punches as the bout progressed. Following a couple valuable lessons, Mitchell realized the futility of playing checkers against the Grand Master of Chess. Three months later, Dmitry fought for another regional strap against the champion, Sergei Melis, with a record of 15 and 1. Pirog was meandering like a snake and spitting venom on the counter. By the fifth stretch, he had gained momentum, placing protracted combinations to the head. and then decided to target the liver. The Estonian somehow got up, albeit to his own detriment. With a record of 17-0 and several regional belts, in the summer of 2010, the 30-year-old Dmitry earned the opportunity to challenge for the WBO world title. Standing across was Daniel Jacobs, an undefeated middleweight with 20 victories, 17 of them coming by way of knockout. The bout took place in the mecca of boxing, the desert city of Las Vegas, and the promoters envisioned Pirogue as easy prey for the rising local star. Agile as ever, Dimitri confidently negated the opponent's offense. Now, Jake, Jacobs goes back to him. Leaned into it for him. And forced him to back up to the ropes. Good right hand by... In the second stretch, Pirogue stepped on the gas. Trained in his corner and Victor Brown. Very good. I don't want to say hand by Pirogue. Jacobs almost went down. A double lead uppercut clearly caught Jacobs off guard, setting him up for the subsequent one-two. That's a good body to round. The Grandmaster visited the liver as well. Part of strategy because I know they were not rather the very, very good fighter. Then skillfully shifted focus to the head. Easily to American food. Didn't go to the Russian restaurant here in the hotel because that wasn't. And continued to apply pressure. As I said, he moves his head in and out, changes, gives you angles, changes on. A bewildered Jacobs attempted to get his licks in. But he's a pressure fighter, which is amazing. Stop, stop, stop. But it was like reaching out to a ghost. By the fifth round, Pirogue was having a whale of a time. I don't suppose... Rogue is speaking Russian. Which is surprising. A lot of these guys, they speak a lot better English than they let you on the thing. Which was a bad omen for Daniel. Yeah, I didn't see yeah, anything no. really land low. It was low. It was low. But I don't think it was intentional. And I don't think it was low. Oh, down goes Jacob on a perfect right hand. No way. Kumi was in there tonight. Produced one of the shockers of the year. Closing the distance by switching his stance, Dimitri checkmated with a single move. The highlight of the fight was a rare maneuver known as the double shift, 
Funnily enough, despite dominating clearly, Pirogue was behind on the judges' scorecards. Whatever cunning plans the officials might have had, the Grandmaster captured the throne and conquered the Western audience. Dimitri After becoming a world champion, the next day I woke up and was scared by the fact of how thoughts materialize. I was never a person with good attributes for boxing. Never. It's a paradox. But I love it dearly and achieved results. Jacobs would go on undefeated for another seven years. Reclaim the world title and defend it four times, only losing by decision to Golovkin and Alvarez. Nine months later, Dimitri would defend the throne for the first time. Javier Maciel was riding a streak of seven wins and held the WBO Latin America title. The champion constantly fired to the ribcage and the head. Neutralizing the incoming traffic with elegant trunk movement. Although missing for the most part, Maciel didn't stop fighting back and even landed a couple of shots. Despite the challenger's iron will and determination, Pirogue intercepted his attacks. Maciel on the counter. Oh, now he's very well placed on the match. Dmitry Pirog, this is a chance. He has still a lot of strength left, and now he's going to the counter. He's going to the counter. Rolled them off the lead shoulder. Dmitry and dominated on the way to a victorious decision. In the fall of 2011, Dimitri accepted another challenge, sharing the ring with the WBO European belt holder, Gennady Martirosyan. Pirog was in a lifted mood. Uncorking powerful series and connecting with a left hook. And during a standing knockdown, the stocky Gennady sought his chance on the inside. The champion allowed the counterpart to work, but then recaptured the initiative, surgically dissecting Martirosyan's defense. Constantly keeping the foe at the end of his punches, in the later rounds, Dmitry gained confidence. And before the 11th frame, Martirosyan's corner deemed it pointless to continue. Shortly after, Dmitry faced the former WBA king, Nobuhiro Ishida. Pirog set the pace, penetrating Ishida's defense with unconventional attacks and stance switching. Forced to give up the initiative, Ishida assumed a counterpuncher role. The Grand Master executed the usual hit and don't get hit strategy, outstriking the resilient foe in his signature manner.
Но как грамотно Кэтпен убрал... Towards the end, he started landing heavy shots more frequently. Отлично. Начинается последняя минута предпоследнего раунда. Не сильный удар, но очень точно. Очень точно, за голова откинулась. Здорово. Плохой. Ну вот как только больше активных действий. Delighting the spectators with an action-packed finale. Добивать дальше. 30 секунд до конца. Вот он где упаковывает. Pierrot claimed a unanimous victory, successfully defending his strap for the third time. In the summer of 2012, negotiations began for a unification bout between Dmitry and the WBA champion at that time, Gennady Golovkin. The parties were on the verge of signing the contract when Pirog ruptured a disc in his back while training. He couldn't recover in time for the scheduled date, and the match fell through. Simultaneously, Dmitry's relationship with the WBO leadership soured due to the injury he had sustained. Realizing that the middleweight champ would not return anytime soon, the organization decided to strip him of his title. Feeling that he had a lot more to show, Dmitry made several attempts to start anew. However, the recovery didn't go as planned, and he had to finally come to terms with reality. Although he didn't officially announce his retirement, at the age of 32, Pirogue permanently left the world of professional sports. In a span of seven years inside the pro ring, Dimitri fought 20 men, and none of them managed to find the keys to defeating him. Look at the head movement there! Delighting boxing enthusiasts with his intricate style for years, the Grandmaster ascended to the pinnacle of the sport. But I don't think it was intentional, I don't think it was... Unfortunately, he was destined to hang up the gloves at the peak of his powers. But in the time allotted, he accomplished enough to carve out a place for his name in the chronicles of the sweet science. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more boxing artists, punch the like button, subscribe to the channel, and vote for sport. But he's a pressure fighter, which is amazing.